win last week. Uh, the, la the last Legacy Open, I think Delver Blade was the winner. And we see a Ancient Tomb to begin with. What two mana will he do? Is it going to be a Grim Ma Oh, Chalice for one. If there's not a Force of Will here, a lot of decks just perish right now. Yeah, and uh, Ben finds Force of Will on the top of his library, not where he needed it to be when that Chalice was on the stack. And Chalice resolves. Ben leads off with a Wasteland on Ollie's Ancient Tomb, and Ollie follows up with a Wasteland of his own. Uh, but yeah, that Chalice on one really cripples the Delver deck. If, uh, if Ben's unable to take care of it. He has a second Wasteland to deal with Ali's Wasteland, so we currently have zero permanents on board with the exception of a Chalice on one. Chalice of the Void, an incredible spell. However many counters are on it, spells of that casting cost get countered. <laughs> and it's a <laughs> Wasteland battle, because Ali plays a Wasteland to deal with uh, Ben's... to deal with... to take out... Uh, Ben's Volcanic Island. Ben is going to attempt to to do something here. He's adding a mana, but... Well, it could be that he's going to do a check. Hey, you, got, you remember that you have a Chalice in play, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's interesting. He bolts and then dazes the bolt in order to pick up the land. That was very clever. So saving his land from Wasteland. He's able to uh, keep his Volcanic Island and replay it. So right now the board is Volcanic Island for Ben Friedman, Chalice of the Void. Ooh, for two Ollie. mana has been achieved. Stoneforge Mystic. And Stoneforge resolves. Ben's going to tutor up a Batter Skull, most likely. And uh, in the meantime, Ali stuck with zero lands. He could he explode very, very easily with a single two mana land. He's got quite a few of them in his deck. He's got City of Traders. He's got Ancient Tomb. Yeah, he's discarded a Metal Worker and a Worm Coil engine so far now that he's uh, unable to hit his land drops. So Batter Skull was the choice off of the Stoneforge Mystic for Ben. And I'm going to make a, an adjustment to the to die on uh, Chalice of the Void. And there's Batter Skull. Germ Token comes in with it. And no lands for Ali. Ali has a couple of Goblin Welders in hand, another Chalice, which he's going to discard here. And Ben is going to be able to crack in for five, knocking Ali to 14 and putting Ben up to 24. I actually like casting that 13. Chalice for, um, for zero. Oh, he's got Lotus Petals. Never mind. Because he's got Lotus Petals, that actually doesn't doesn't work. Now we see Goblin Welder, a very... Oh, counterspelled. <laughs> <laughs> Ali accidentally yep. runs his uh, Welder into his own chalice yep. off of the uh, Great Furnace. And uh, I don't believe that that was any kind of attempt at shenanigans. I think it's just he'd forgotten. Right. So excited he got a mana. <laughs> I have land. I can cast a spell. Oh, it got countered, but I got to cast it. So I think, yeah, we're in combat here, it looks like. And Ben discards a Grim Lava Mancer. Ben discarding his one mana spells. Here we go. We're going to see a Grim Monolith come out. Right, remember so that there is a Force of Will in Ben Friedman's hand. Yeah, so uh, Lotus Petal resolves. Grim Monolith now on the stack. And Ben thinking about it. I think you probably I would get rid of that. that. Yeah, I would get rid of that with, with just so much excitement. You've got a uh, hefty clock on the board already. Ali already down to eight. You're not going to kill him next turn, but... Well, Monolith resolves. Maybe Ben's plan is to counter whatever it is he tries to cast off the Monolith, which happens to be a Metal Worker, and that does appear to be the case. So Force of Will removing Delver of Secrets will counter the Metal Worker. And... Ben at 27 life to Ali's 8. Crashes in yet again. Ben goes up to 31. Ali goes down to 3. And Ali, not much time to get out of this city one. He of does traders. find a City of Traders. That's, but he's pretty locked by that Batter Skull. We see a, another Grim Monolith in his hand. So he's, he's got a Worm city. Uh, Sorry, a uh, Lodestone Golem. So City of Traders... 
uh, casts a second Grim Monolith, and then he casts Lodestone Golem, which, uh, which you mentioned in, in his hand. This can block the uh, Batter Skull. There are very few cards. If you look at Ben Friedman's list, the amount of actual non uh, one casting cost spells in his deck are very few. Three Force of Wills, one Umazawa's Jite, four Days, one Batter Skull, four Stoneforge Mystics, and two Geist of St. Traft are all that he can cast in his entire deck. So Lodestone Golem does jump in front of the Batter Skull, so it's in uh, you know, a little extra ability doesn't come into play there, but uh, it does buy Ali another turn to get a second metal worker onto the board. Looks like Ben has a fetch land. Am I seeing that right? Uh, yep, there like it is. Tarn. Yeah, Scalding Tarn, he's going to go ahead uh, and crack it. I believe a Geist of St. Traft in his hand. Maybe I missaw that, but I, I thought I saw it. a Geist. But being able to take out that germ token has bought Ali enough time to potentially dig back into this game. Now, uh, Ben right now, he already passed by several lands that he could get. I think what he's doing is just checking what spells he can actually cast in his deck. There are yeah. not many. Yeah, trying to get a, uh, kind of sculpt a plan around that chalice for one that is uh, on Ali's side of the board. And here comes the Geist. There it is. You were right, Geist of St. Traft. Well, if if nothing else, he's got plenty of blue uh, one-mana spells to exile to Force of Will. <laughs> Which we saw him do already. Uh, Geist of St. Traft resolves. Now Ali with an active metal worker. Here you see Geist of St. Traft standard all-star for pretty much the entire time it was in standard. And uh, makes an impact in legacy as well. Ali might just be dead right now. Finding some answer to that... Um, Looking at his main deck, the only way that Ali can be able to stay alive this game is to get a Worm Coil Engine into play somehow. He does play four. One he, discarded he discarded one earlier. Yes. So I see a Cavern of Souls. It looks like he's just picking them up. So unable to survive the onslaught of Geist of St. Traft, Batter Skull, and, you know, a little work from Stoneforge Mystic as well. Uh, Ali falls in game one here of round 11 of the StarCityGames.com open series featuring the Invitational live from Indianapolis. If you're just tuning in, I'm Joey Pasco in the booth with Adrian Sullivan, and uh, we're a few rounds deep into our legacy portion of Saturday. We're going to uh, be having some standard action later on for you guys. Uh, the standard portion of the Invitational We'll be wrapping up today. We'll have four more rounds of standard, and then tomorrow the top eight will be legacy. Yeah, I, I'm thinking back to that early discard of the Worm Coil Engine. He did have a Goblin Welder in his hand at that <laughs> point. And you know, if he had discarded that Welder, I think he was thinking, oh, if I get a mana, I'll start you know, being able to activate it, forgetting about his own Chalice. A Worm Coil Engine at that point in the game, he had three mana in play. He had the Metal Worker, which I don't know how much mana it could create, but uh, perhaps that would be enough. And then the Worm Coil Engine, I think, would have taken the game away. Yeah, it really could have, and maybe that was what it was. He ended up, I believe at one point, had two Goblin Welders in hand. So yeah. even discarding, uh, he did eventually discard one of them, but you know, maybe he should have held on to that Worm Coil for a bit longer and could have really got back into it. But it's we'll a, see if it's he can... Hard. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, Starting off with a Chalice on one, on turn one, against a Delver deck is you have to feel like you're in really good shape to win. So in terms of the sideboard cards for Ben Friedman, first of all, Force of Will is a card that has to come in. You cannot allow a Chalice of the Void to resolve. It is just too powerful against you and really problematic. Wear Tear also is a card to come in because uh, the remove a... You've got to be knowing that you're going to be playing against Blood Moon and Chalice and it can hit both sides of that. Right. A lot of targets. Plenty of targets for wear and tear for Ben. Um, in addition, I really like Swords to Plowshares. Even though Chalice can happen, you can potentially counter the Chalice for one. And even if you don't counter the Chalice, like, just having that, they don't always have a Chalice on turn one. And if they go Goblin Welder on turn one, you want to be able to get rid of it. Finally, 
rest in peace is in his sideboard. It's worth noting that he is playing against a Goblin Welder list. And um, Rest in Peace is not necessarily for a deck like Goblin Welder, but depending on if he has too many of other cards, I could see Rest in Peace being an anti-Welder card that would be fairly effective. On the other side of the board, we have Ali's sideboard being four Ensnaring Bridge, one Spine of Ishsa, two Duplicant, three Trinisphere, a Steel Hellkite, two Bottled Cloister, a Karn Liberated, and a Witchbane Orb. I think uh, Trinisphere could certainly be I'll give Ben fits because his deck is meant to run off such few lands, so few lands. And you see these Del Delver decks, they'll get up to three lands max uh, to cast like a Geist of Saint Traft. And if you're making all of their spells cost three, like you really, really choke them on mana, uh, not allowing the tempo deck to have that tempo and cast multiple spells a turn, you know, threat. Uh, backed up by counter spells, you just can't do that with you've got a, if a Trinisphere is in play. So three copies of those come in uh, almost definitely. Ensnaring Bridge is one that's iffy. It really depends on ho how whether Ali can empty his hand because uh, Ensnaring Bridge. I mean, uh, because Ben's attackers are actually pretty small, ex with the exception of like the the germ, the four four germ, and the four four angel. The angel which circumvents the Ensnaring Bridge anyway, uh, yeah. because it it just is attacking and doesn't isn't declared as an attacker so uh i don't know if ensnaring bridge is something that he would really want uh unless he thinks that he's able to empty his hand very quickly uh th those are the main ones i see the trinosphere i definitely like you can look at ben friedman trying to get a read on ollie very just gazing at him at the beginning of the game we have a turn one welder there it is turn one welder Ben casts Cataxian Probe. And we're going to see what's up. We've got Lodestone Golem. We've got Lightning Greaves. It looks like Worm Coil Engine, Lotus Petal, and a Great Furnace, a second copy of it. Lodestone Golem we had up on the screen uh, a little while ago. Non-artifact spells cost one more to cast. That's another one that will choke Ben on mana. Because he's not really casting a lot of artifacts. Now, if Ben's not aware, Ollie can make four mana next turn with that hand. He can lay the land, lay the Lotus Petal, sack the Lotus Petal, change the Lotus Petal, in, uh, change a Great Furnace into a Lotus Petal, and have four mana. Which means we could be seeing that Lodestone Golem as early as next turn. Now, Ben does have access to Force of Will in hand. He's going to play and crack a Flooded Strand immediately here. Yeah, if Ben... Uh, doesn't just kill that Goblin Welder right now. There we go. <laughs> I was going to say, that Force of Will in hand makes me feel like there should have, should be a, a Goblin Welder not on the table. He has the Swords to Plowshares, so he's not too concerned about that. He can save his Force of Will for something else. And that is what he decides to do. Goblin Welder exiled, and Ali untaps his Great Furnace. Draws. Looks like uh, Kul'dath, a Forge Master off the top. We see a Lightning Greaves and the Lotus Petal come down. Both resolve. Ben untaps for his turn. Draws a Ponder off the top. Has a couple of Brainstorms, a Ponder, a Force of Will, a couple of lands, and a Mystery Card, which may be a Gitaxian Probe. Lightning Greaves is an incredibly scary card for the Mud deck. So many of the creatures just do ridiculous things. I know a Forge Master with a Greaves usually means your opponent is dead. Yeah, being able to threaten haste just on these monsters is uh, is very scary. One thing that's kind of interesting is I don't see a Blightsteel Colossus um, for him to get the instant kill. He does have the Sundering Titan, however. So a Ponder finishes resolving for Ben Friedman. He draws and casts a Delver of Secrets. A modified Delver of Secrets, it looks like. Can't quite tell what's going on there, but it is Ooh. a Delver. Ancient Tomb. And you said you saw Koldoth, a Forge Master. Yes. This is going to be rough. There's four mana. How far into this is, is Ben, or is uh, Ali going to go? He starts with the Lodestone, and then he can Greaves it up. Now remember, Force of Will in hand. Ben has good reason to not let that guy hit play. Either way, Ali takes two damage from that Ancient Tomb. So Ben does have that additional Gitaxian Probe. Uh... 
that I thought he may exile that to the, the force of will to counter this lodestone golem. Looks like that's what he's going with. Yeah. So force of will exiling Gitaxian probe. Lodestone golem is countered, and Ali passes the turn. Ben with two lands. And a Delver in play. Gitaxian <laughs> Probe off the top. That's a neat altar. So that was the altar. It was Bruce Banner into the Incredible Hulk. And you can see the Worm Coil engine and the Koldatha Forge Master there in Ollie's hand. Yeah, Ben casts that Gitaxian Probe that was off of the top. That's the third one of the game that Ben's seen. And uh, flipped the Delver and gave Ben some f free information at the low cost of two life. I would not mind wastelanding that ancient tomb right now. He's uh, he's got the wasteland. He could certainly kind of threaten to uh, to keep Ollie out of this game by doing that. He's going to cast a brainstorm first. Main phase brainstorm. A little bit more info. What do we got? Finds I think a couple of fetch lands and a ponder. Brainstorm finishes resolving. Oh, not finishes not resolving, well. but <laughs> it's still got to put a couple back. It's not ancestral recall. It's not. <laughs> Feels like it sometimes. Yeah. He's going to put back two lands. And that's a whole lot of nothing there. He does do the wasteland. In for three in the air. And he's going to have to redraw one of those not exciting cards. Ponder. Look at two of them. One extra card. Look at that. A force of will. How lucky. Yeah. He's he, got a blue card in hand. He does have an additional brainstorm, so he can draw the force of will here, but he will be stuck with those two other lands on top, but it will protect him from whatever Ollie's got. I mean, I like putting a Force of Will on top and a fetch land right below it. Or if he has to actually, he has a fetch land in he hand anyway. I still put the fetch land right below it just so that I can use it later. Yeah. Yeah, I like that just to, uh, I mean, it is, you've got a clock, and now you just need to protect, not not necessarily protect your clock, but protect your life total, protect your, from your opponent's uh, massive threats that we've, we're already aware of. He goes with that plan. He just draw the force of will. And There's passes a, back to Ali. a lotus petal. So Ali with access to remember worm up coil, to lotus petal, and uh, the Koldatha Forge Master in hand. Yeah. So he doesn't play the second lotus petal. Just passes back. Ben draws that other fetch land. So did exactly as we thought he might. He's going to go ahead and brainstorm here. Interesting. Yeah, he knows one of them is a land. Yeah, it's and then two Tundra, surprise cards. And Stoneforge Mystic are the other two cards. So he's going to put back the Tundra and looks like the Misty Rainforest. He's got the Scalding Tarn still in hand to refresh the top of his library. He has no blue cards for that Force of Will, which could be relevant. He's going to go ahead and uh, play that Scalding Tarn and crack it. Well, if uh, Ali and Trazi draws a uh, third great furnace then I think the game just completely blows open because he would be able to spend five mana by putting a lotus petal and the great furnace into play and put a Koldatha forge master into play give it haste sacrifice his three lands to uh, go get sundering titan and destroy all of Ben Friedman's lands give it haste and have it come in that would be something yeah <laughs> ben finishes his turn by uh, tutoring up a batter skull off of a Stoneforge Mystic and crashing in with the Incredible Hulk Insect Isle Aberration, knocking Ali for another three life down to 13. And it looks like he actually drew, uh, I think, a City of Traitors, so he can actually make the same play because he'll have a Lotus Petal back that uh, he won't have had to have sacrificed. There's four. Yeah, so City of Traitors comes five. down. Five. Five mana. Going to see the Koldatha Forge Master. Yep. Does it resolve? It there does. is no force will. Okay, it's hasty. Okay, let's sacrifice three artifacts. He goes land, land, lotus petal, it looks like. Yep. Looks like he's going with, yeah, two great furnaces and a lotus petal. He pedal. could sacrifice the Koldatha Forge Master. That's another thing he he's could. thinking about. He's certainly considering the Forge Master now. He's looking at his hand. It's Warm Coil Engine. We all know it's Warm Coil Engine. There you see Koldatha Forge Master from Scars of Mirrodin. It's a 3-5 five for 5, but it gets you the Tinker effect, except uh, not as good as Tinker. Slightly <laughs> slightly worse. <laughs> uh, 
He does decide to sacrifice the and second Great Furnace, but yeah, you sacrifice three artifacts and you can search your library for an artifact and put it onto the battlefield, so Tinker was... There's the 7-10 split. I see an island, I see a plains, I see a mountain. Destroy them. And Ben gets Armageddon. And now let's put the Lightning Greaves for zero onto the Sundering Titan. In with the 7-10 split. <laughs> yeah, I believe that will be the... The this up here and this it also makes it untargetable, so it's immune to a card like Swords to Plowshares. And Ben, and then he puts it back on the Forge Master. <laughs> Those Greaves jumping back and forth. And, and Ben says, I, I can't done. beat you. So uh, Ali evens things up here, a game of peace against Ben Friedman's Blue White Red Delver deck here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series featuring the Invitational. Coming to you guys live from Indianapolis, I'm Joey Pasco in the booth with Adrian Sullivan. And uh, yeah, we've got a we've got quite a match at this point. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan with Joey Pasco, and Ali and Trazi, they're showing the power of Lightning Greaves. Yeah, you know, I always love when you have these decks that have Lightning Greaves and it just jumps from creature to creature yeah. to creature. All you you know, it's sort of like I don't know the sisterhood of the traveling boots. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stretch, but I like it. <laughs> Here, you wear these boots. They look great <laughs> on you. Can I put them on? Let me, let me try. Yeah. Hey, are you, uh, yeah, they look better on you. I'll put them back on you. So, yeah, that's pretty much. Now, uh, Ali and Traz Trazi here playing Mud, one of my favorite decks in Legacy, and a deck that uh, is not very popular overall. I, I think I've seen some Legacy breakdowns, and it tends to be about 2% of the metagame, just in general, which would mean that in a room like we had, with 328 players, there would have been something like five or six players that might have been playing it. But Legacy is such a wildly diverse format that unless a deck gets incredibly popular, the thing about what we end up seeing is very rarely do you play against the same deck twice. Now, we have seen a lot of this blue, white, red Delver deck. Yes. And I think one of the reasons is, this is one of my takes as uh, one of the two best decks in the format. If you saw the Eric Smith, his very decisive win at the last Invitational, uh, Gerard Fabiano, his win, and uh, we had the other very high placing at the last uh, Open. And Eric Smith, um, I know some people have contested whether or not he designed this deck or not, but regardless, he at least put it in the spotlight. Right. And uh, one of the things that the deck can do, it can play two different kinds of games. It can lay a, uh, it can lay a Delver of Secrets and then have that quickly flip and do almost a pantomime of the aggro control style draws of, say, a Rug Delver deck. Or if the game goes long, it can switch gears to that Esper Blade style of drop the Stoneforge Mystic, ride the Stoneforge Mystic, and grind out the rest of the cards. Right. Yeah, it's a very versatile deck. Uh, these tempo decks tend to be... They're able to run off such few, so few mana sources that I think that gives them a lot of, a lot of advantage in a format that uh, really kind of hinges on just the first couple of turns in a lot of in a lot of matchups and it appears that ben friedman is doing the um the same kind of thing that owen turtenwald also chose to do he has uh, streamlined certain aspects of the deck by taking out the stifles and stifle is a card that i generally speaking quite like in this deck mm -hmm. but one of the things that a lot of people that play legacy say about stifles if you're a stifle deck um, you really want to have that Wasteland Stifle ability to kind of tear down someone's mana. Right. And that this deck is not necessarily aggressive enough to take full advantage of it. But one of the things I think, though, is that the format in Legacy right now is such that Stifle is just a good card. Yeah. Now, what can you do with a Stifle? You can destroy a fetch land as it tries to get a land on you. Mm -hmm. You can use it to stop a Storm deck from beginning to go off. You can use it to stop Ancestral Visions from being cast for, you know, it's uh, uh, the absurd way. You can use it to stop a Mother of Runes from protecting something. 
there's just a lot of different cards that are very, very important to stop. I mean, for example, let's say you're playing against, uh, for the sake of argument, Reed Duke, and Reed Duke is about to untap his elves for elf combo. You could stop the untap of the, the critical untap of one of the Nettle Sentinels and make it so that perhaps he doesn't go off right then. Right. Yeah, a lot of different things you can do, a lot of kind of subtle things that you can do with the, uh, with the card stifle, but foregoing it, Blue-White Red Delver, uh, or at least this iteration of the deck, is able to kind of supplement its defense, make it make it slightly, you know, longer of a game with Geist of St. Traff, but he gets not only access to Lightning Bolt as a removal spell that can go to well, the dome, but he has access to Swords to Plowshares, where, you know, the, the stifles make room for well, cards like that. The, uh, in the original Eric Smith list, mm -hmm. Eric Smith had the exact same counts of bolts and swords to plowshares. Mm -hmm. The difference in this list is that uh, Ben has taken out four stifles and added in three Gitaxian probe and the fourth Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, yeah, so just to get that extra information. Game three is underway. Ben Friedman has led with Bruce Banner, Delver of Secrets, and Ali has played an Ancient Tomb turn one. Into a Grim Monolith, no Chalice yet. Grim Monolith meets Daze. And you can ben see Friedman. the Ensnaring Bridge there, too. He did bring in the Ensnaring Bridge. So Delver of Secrets refuses to flip here for this first turn and gets in for just one. Ben with a uh, replaying his Tundra that he had used to cast the Daze last turn. And now Ali plays a Wasteland. Makes two mana with the Ancient Tomb and plays a Lightning Greaves. So the board now on Ali's side. Wasteland, Ancient Tomb tapped, and a Lightning Greaves passes back to Ben. Ben has a Tundra and a Delver of Secrets. Here at the end of Ali's turn, he's going to Brainstorm. And uh, the question about the Brainstorm here, the way he's brainstorming, he's brainstorming not for the best card selection, but for the best use of his time. Yeah. With the best use of his time, he can put a instant on top, make sure he gets a flip, and then he might not have the opportunity, based on uh, the, the sheer danger that a mud deck presents, he might not have the opportunity to most uh, correct, or not correctly, to most effectively make use of the library manipulation, but what he can do is be make best use of his mana. Yeah, so here he's going to be able to flip his Delver off of a Swords to Plowshares, so Incredible Hulk is active. And Ben has a, uh, he's got a couple of lands to play. He's going to play a Scalding Tarn, so now he can refresh the top of his library if he chooses. He's also got a uh, Stoneforge Mystic in hand, which he can attempt to cast here. Now, if you're not following along on Twitter, at SCG Live and hashtag SCG Envy, well, you missed out. Ship It Hala has said that he is no longer in the tournament, dead at 6-5, and that Deathblade, maybe not a great choice for Legacy. That bug would be the thing to do if you're a Deathblade kind of player. A, a, a conclusion lots of players have made coming into this weekend. Ship It Hala, of course, is Michael Hetrick, if you don't recognize his moto name. Look at all that mana. Yeah, City of Traders comes down for Ali here after taking a hit from that Incredible Hulk insectile aberration. Five yeah. mana. Yeah, here's... Here comes something big, I'd imagine. I do believe I see a Kuldotha Forge Master, and I do believe I'm correct. There is a Kuldotha Forge Master. Gonna try to pick up the pants? And nope. Immediately, Swords <laughs> to Plowshares. Now get to work, buddy. Go to the farm. Yeah, Swords to Plowshares responding to the uh, attempt to suit it up with the Lightning Greaves. Uh, ben was wise to not play the Stoneforge Mystic there last turn that he, uh, he could have played instead leaving up the opportunity to cast uh, both Spell Pierce and Swords to Plowshares. So he uh, spends the rest of, or spends the end of Ali's turn cracking a Scalding Tarn, fetching up another Tundra. So Ben's side of the board is two Tundras and a flipped Delver of Secrets. Ali has Ancient Tomb, City of Traders, and Wasteland, and a Lightning Reeves. Ben untaps. His hand appears to be Swords to Plowshares, Stoneforge Mystic, Spell Pierce and Volcanic Island. Swords to Plowshares was the draw for the turn. So he can play a land and still keep up both. Uh, he can play a land, cast Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't the draw for the turn. The draw for the turn was another Stoneforge Mystic, I think. In for three. Passes the turn. So he's going to leave up all his uh, counter spells and removal. 
and Ali draws a Worm Coil Engine. Starts it out with Ensnaring Bridge. He's got, I believe, three cards in hand? One, uh, two, three. Yeah, it looks like three. For this ben, one, yeah, this is this is kind of a tough situation for Ben. It's kind of a card you don't really want to counter compared to the other things that Ollie can do. There are so few cards that matter in the matchup um, in terms of how you can use your counter spells. Oh, look at that spell pierce. Yeah, the baiting thing Ollie into taking two more damage, and does he have another spell pierce? He does not have another spell pierce, but Ali doesn't know that. Ali's hand appears to be Worm Coil Engine, Double Goblin Welder, and... So it's actually four cards in So here. it is actually four cards, yeah. And he lets it go. So Spell Pierce successfully countering the Ensnaring Bridge, and Ali passes the turn back. Ben draws Daze, I think, for the turn. In for three, down to seven. Now those Ancient Tomb activations, really scary, because one more activation, and that makes it a two-turn clock for Ben potentially even quicker, but here's a Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic is going to find, he's he's looking at Jitay and Batterskull, they're near each other, he's going with the Jitay. After seeing that ensnaring bridge, maybe thinking the uh, the germ token isn't the best plan. Ali and Trazi in real trouble here. Um, I think he might actually be locked out with that draw, let me think. He's got a Lightning Greaves. Um, no, he is not locked out yet. If he draws a two-mana source on the next turn, he can cast through the days a Worm Coil Engine, Greaves it up, and go down to one and then back up to seven. Let's see if he can pull it off. Not this turn. This turn he has. No, he needs, yeah, he he needs it next here. turn. He's got a, a Blood Moon, which would actually hurt him more than it would hurt Ben. So Ben here has a Stoneforge Mystic and an Insectile Aberration available, both live. He's got an Umazawa's Jitay in hand. He can go land, suit up, or land, play Jitay, suit up one of the creatures. Crash in for four. Knocking Ali to three, which would, yeah. So there's the Scalding Tarn. He's not going to play the GTA just yet. He's just going to crash in for four, knocking Ali to three. And looks like he's going to go ahead and cast another copy of Stoneforge Mystic here. Yep, Stoneforge Mystic number two comes down. Going to find that Batter Skull that we saw earlier. There it is. The batter skull goes to hand and Ben passes the turn with lethal on board. Ali needs to find some way to get a worm coil engine into play. It has Off to be a double mana source or else. And it oh is. Oh my god. There now, it is. Here's the thing. Okay. Is that uh, there's a source to plowshares in Ben Friedman's hand. It still means that Ali is going to gain the six life. Right. So he's he's not out of the game but he's not as in as he would like to be once this worm coil engine uh, hits the table. And so. remember, that City of Traders he has in play will die to the right. next City of Traders. So he, uh, I, did he have two Worm Coil Engines in hand or just the one? Uh, looks like two. So. Okay, so that means he can follow up with a second Worm Coil Engine if he draws another double mana source. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to have to go Runner Runner Soul Land. So this is pretty exciting. He's going to have to take two, though, uh, off of this Ancient Tomb. So he's going to fall to one. It's scary, but it's really his only way in. He's facing lethal. He has to do something. He can't just pass the turn. So it's going to add two with the City of Traders. He's got access to five here, and then there's the seven. City gets rid of City. Yeah. Two, four. So he's got four in the pool. Six mana. It's like, yeah, he's, he does not want to tap that Ancient Doom, but it's kind of necessary. So he's going to fall to one here. Worm and Coil. Worm Coil is the play. He can cast it. Uh, he has it mana up to pay for days. So put on the boots. Yeah, as soon as he tries to equip source, the plowshares will exile it. But Ali will go back up to seven. Okay. 
So and uh, the attack here knocks him to five, which actually means a double mana land will not even save him. Right, knocks him four five. Right, so yeah. it knocks him knocks him to two. Knocks him to two. Yeah. So he can't use that ancient tomb again. So it's looking really bad for Ali. He's gonna have to draw something. I'm not even sure what he could what he could do to get out of this. Looks like Scalding Tarn. Well, I mean, he has to ben. actually hope that uh, Ben Friedman does not attack with both of these. Uh, yeah. Both of these mystics. If the both mystics come in, then Ali is out of it. Yeah, and both mystics yeah. do come in after Ben uh, casts and equips one of the Stoneforge mystics to uh, Numazawa's Jite. He casts the Jite. Uh, the let's pretend he draws a uh, metal worker. If there are three artifacts in Ali's hand, um, then Ben can, uh, then Ali can still survive. Let's see what he it draws. has to be a metal worker, and then have an three artifacts in hand. He did not draw a metal worker. He found lodestone. Oh, I'm sorry, lotus petal, which means he cannot survive yeah, this turn. Yeah, he's got access to. Oh wait, wait, wait. Um, that is not three, true. Four. He can lotus petal, get a goblin welder, make the welder have haste. And then turn. Oh, uh, yeah. Ben Friedman there say. sees it now. <laughs> Let's yeah. take that out. Before the Greaves can uh, get, get onto the welder, Ben takes it out with one of the fresh counters off of the Umazawa's Jite. And wow, that was a tight one, though. I mean, Ben really had Ali on the ropes the entire time, but the fact that Ali fought and fought and fought yeah. and just tried to get back in it, that made it, made it very exciting. But Ali eventually falls two games to one to Ben Friedman's blue-white-red Delver deck here at the uh, StarCityGames.com yeah. Open Series featuring the Invitational. I mean